I don't think any manufacturer makes an authentic retro like Royal Enfield, and the all-new Classic 350 is no different. This bike is inspired by the G2 model that was introduced after the Second World War and follows the original Classic 350 that was first seen in 2008. It has been completely redesigned in 2022 with a new chassis and the J-Series engine, but it keeps the look and aesthetic that is straight out of the 1950s. So, if you're after a gorgeous little single thumper and speed and horsepower aren't really a priority, then this just might be the bike for you. And that's before we even get to the price, which is truly inconceivable. The 350 Classic features a brand new 349cc single cylinder engine that was first seen in the Royal Enfield Meteor. It has a counterbalance shaft that does minimise vibrations, but it still has a bit of that Royal Enfield single cylinder character that people love. It puts out 20.2 brake horsepower at 6100 rpm and has a great 5 speed constant mesh gearbox. It's got a new twin down tube chassis that has been designed from the ground up for this model. The front brake is a 300mm disc with a twin piston floating caliper and there is a 270mm disc with a single piston floating caliper on the rear. The brakes also have dual channel ABS. In terms of suspension, it has 41mm telescopic forks with 130mm of travel and twin tube emulsion shocks on the rear with 6 step adjustable preload. The Classic 350 has a 19 inch spoked or alo rim on the front and an 18 inch rim on the rear. And can someone let me know in the comments why manufacturers in Australia list pretty much every measurement in the metric system but always list wheel rims in inches? Weird. It's got fuel injection and the fuel tank holds 13 litres or 3.4 US gallons or 2.8 imperial gallons or 457 fluid ounces. There you go, I hope that keeps everyone happy. It has a seat height of 805mm or 31.7 inches, a wet weight of 195 kilos or you know what, I'm not going to go through all that again, I'm sure you can work it out. Pricing for the all-new Classic 350 in Australia starts at $7,990 for the Halcyon models of black, green and grey, $8,290 for the Desert Sand and Marsh Grey Signals models, $8,690 for the dark variants of Stealth Black and Gunmetal Grey, and $8,790 for the stunning chrome models in bronze and red, and it comes with a three-year unlimited kilometre warranty. Well, first up, the build quality, and in particular, the instrument cluster. This is easily the highest quality finish on a Royal Enfield ever. No arguments whatsoever. The design and styling looks like an old school motorcycle with the shape of the tank, the headlight, the instrument cluster, and the spoked wheels. But it's thoroughly modern with the added bonus that unlike a true vintage motorcycle, it doesn't leak oil all over your garage. But back to the headlight and the instrument cluster. It is so beautifully designed and matches the bike perfectly, but with a couple of modern touches like the small LCD screen, and it's got a fuel gauge which is handy but not a deal breaker, and just like the Meteor, it is extremely economical to run. I for one love the colourways, in particular the Halcyon Grey and the chrome red model that I had. The paint finish is excellent and the chrome looks like it is really high quality. The exhaust and the exhaust note are fabulous. It pops and crackles when you downshift and the shape of the exhaust with that classic pea shooter is absolutely spot on in terms of the style of this bike. The handling makes it a real fun little bike to ride. I thought the handling on the Meteor was inconceivable for the price of the bike, but the Classic 350 betters it because your weight is slightly further forward, putting more weight on the front wheel. The ride position and geometry for me are really quite comfortable, and I reckon you could ride the Classic 350 all day just pottering around the back roads and enjoying the sights and the smells of the countryside. The spoked wheels look great, and the fact that it's got a 19 inch front really emphasises the retro look. The engine is much more refined than the previous version, but still retains that classic Royal Enfield thump, and as the engine gets run in and starts to loosen up, that character and charm is only going to increase. The other thing that I love is that there are plenty of accessories and they're really affordable, so you can personalise the bike as you wish. And as we said before, the price of this bike is truly inconceivable. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Honestly, not too much. It's only 20 brake horsepower, but it's not pretending that it's got any more. 
It would be nice if it was a little bit more capable of doing highway speeds, but if you're going to be doing that for any great period of time, I'd say buy a different bike. Which brings me to a fairly controversial point. Why aren't Royal Enfield making a new 500cc version of the Classic that would be in direct competition to the new BSA Gold Star? The 350 engine in the Classic is absolutely fine, but I can't help but think Royal Enfield would do really well if they brought back a new version of the Classic 500. Although who knows what they've got in store for us. The seat was comfortable enough, but it wasn't as comfortable and as padded as the one on the Meteor. Again, not really a big deal. Okay, so what else didn't I like? Well, nothing. Royal Enfield are doing a brilliant job of creating mass-produced motorcycles that are full of character, sell really well, and continue to put grins on riders' faces. The Royal Enfield Classic 350 gets an eight from me. It's just a fun and seriously stylish little bike. No fuss, no electronics apart from ABS, and that little LCD on the dash. It's just pure, simple motorcycling fun. The Classic 350 is not about riding on highways or freeways. It's about putting about in style and not being in a rush. You could do so much on the Classic 350. Just like the Meteor, it would make a great commuter because it's light and economical to run. And as long as you don't have too much freeway riding to do, you'll be fine. But mostly, it is a perfect bike for those weekend rides with mates. I did a fair amount of riding on it, I commuted, I did some freeways, but I was happiest when I was on the country back roads. So it was back out to the orchard at Darks Forest to pick up a couple of four packs of their locally produced pale ale to have with a couple of mates around the fire pit. If you're doing these type of roads, you could easily ride this bike all day. It's comfy and with just enough power to have some fun. Let me know what you think of the Classic 350. Do you like it or would you prefer to see a 500cc version? And let me know whether you prefer the Classic 350 over the Meteor 350. Which one would you buy if you're in the market for this type of bike? If you like the content, then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Unlike pretty much everything else these days, it's free. And if you do subscribe, it really helps us out. Coming up on the channel, we have some more rider stories and a couple of classic bike reviews, with the first being on my stunning 1972 Laverda 750 SF. That's all for today. Stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.